So you want to study computer science after high school. Maybe you think of working at big tech companies and you probably clicked on this video because you wanted to apply to Waterloo in particular. So I'm a fourth year CS student at Waterloo. I've completed four co-ops and today we're going to be kind of going over the basics of some of the things you should be doing in order to optimize your chances at getting into Waterloo. The admission process is partly luck based. There are some things you simply can't control and the best you could do is to optimize your chances and hope to get in because they don't accept everyone. There are a lot of great candidates out there who end up getting rejected. Originally, I didn't really want to make this video because I feel like it's going to rage bait a lot of people and personally, I'm not the type of person to just sit here and talk to you about all my achievements. I went to high school in Toronto. I remember being a grade 10 student. I had just almost failed my introductory to computer science course because I got caught plagiarizing code. I was spending all this time binge watching these how to get into Waterloo CS videos, all this bullshit. I feel like at the end of the day, that type of content just feeds into stress and comparison and doesn't really give you the best idea of how you can actually optimize your chances given your current situation and what are some of the things that they are looking for in particular. And I also feel like a lot of the videos nowadays are kind of outdated because of AI and everything. Waterloo is basically just selecting students who they think have the highest chances of landing the best internships and passing all the courses. And if you guys want to hear me talk about recruiting and my internship experiences, make sure to subscribe. I'm not going to be talking about those things in this video. Today, we're just going to be talking about how you can create a blueprint for creating your AIF, improving your grades, having projects, all that sort of stuff. So I would say the first pillar of your application is just simply going to be your grades. I think for most Ontario schools, they'll look at your grades up until April of grade 12. There isn't really an official statistic or a cutoff average for getting in, but from personal experience and things that I've heard, you probably need like around a 97. You don't need high 90s in general if you wanted to study computer science and land internships in university. But for Waterloo, it's kind of a non-negotiable because there's just so many people applying. There's like 10,000 applicants every single year. And the sad reality is that if you're below a 97 average, there's probably like a thousand candidates ahead of you. So you really need to pull through with that supplementary application. Now, without going into too much detail about my high school experience, I had like a 97 average. I'll probably put up my grades on the screen. I did have a lot of grade inflation though because of the whole COVID mess. Although grades are really important, they really only make up half of the application because you could have a 100 average and still get rejected because they're looking for students who not only can succeed in school, but have things going for them outside of school as well. And in Canada, you don't really have any standardized testing. I feel like the school system here was always full of shit. And with AI on the rise, I feel like it's going to make the traditional high school system even more pointless than it actually is. So. On the other hand, I feel like AI could make it so that they value your school grades a lot less than some of the things you're involved in outside of school. But that's just also a guess. Um, I don't really have any official statistic. Getting your grades up is pretty self-explanatory. But the second pillar that we're going to be talking about is your AIF. So if you've done your research, you probably know of the application information form. Basically just a form where you're able to write down why you want to apply to Waterloo, list out your extracurriculars, and also answer a few questions. Now, if you have a strong AIF and you apply to some scholarships, you could actually land yourself with an early admission. And that's what happened to a few of my friends. If you have national or even international level achievements in things like academics or even sports, you're definitely at a huge advantage because that tells the school that you're someone who is very passionate and you're someone who is very high achieving. So for normal people like me and you who don't have national or international level achievements, uh, the AIF is still going to make or break your application. It's worth mentioning that they only care about things that you do, which overlap into your grade 10, 11, and 12 years. So if you played violin for two years back in middle school, they're not gonna care about that. They only care about which kind of things you're able to balance with high school. So things like school clubs, sports, music, volunteer work, and even projects, you can put those down. You write down how many hours per week you commit to them. And you're also given the opportunity to write a few sentences about a particular activity. It's much better to have one to three activities where you spend 15 to 20 hours a week on over having like 20 different clubs and you only show up to half of them. Definitely quality over quantity here. 
If you find any school clubs that relate to math or coding, or even robotics, I think that's even better because it actually relates to the program itself. Another section of the AIF is for contests. I think you should just try to write all of the contests because they look for participation and your interest in math. Uh, they used to do the computing contest, the CCC, but they canceled it this year because of so many people using ChatGPT. So I don't think they care about that too much anymore. Bro, I gotta kill this drowned zombie or else I can't sleep. All right, there we go. Your school probably offers the contest. If not, you can also try to find a private school that hosts the contest. And yeah, just do all of them. The more important ones are Euclid and the CSMC because they ask for those scores specifically. But yes, yeah, some of the things that I had in high school, I'll put up on the screen for you. I don't want to waste too much time talking about them. So if it's your grade 12 year right now and you're looking for some things to patch your application, I would try to join a few school clubs relating to STEM. Try to work your way up to an executive position and spend a lot of time per week. And also spend some time preparing for the math contests. I feel like for most people who are already good at school math, you can probably get like top 25% on the contest really easily. So getting to that top 10, top 5% range is very doable. Ooh, okay, so we got a lot of iron in this chest. I'm gonna drown. So technically everything supplementary is gonna go on the AIF, but I would say that there's almost a third subsection of the AIF that no one really talks about these days. I think that you need some sort of proof that you're able to build stuff with code. 10 years ago, the average applicant probably didn't even know how to code at all. Around five years ago when I was applying, probably half the people were already pretty good at coding. And nowadays with AI, I feel like if you're in high school and you haven't yet tried to build an app or a website with AI, you might be falling behind. It's not really enough to say, oh, you know, Python and Java and web development. I think you actually need to start a GitHub and start building a portfolio, either starting just with some coursework, building some fun personal projects, and even better if you can attend some hackathons or do some freelance work. I think just having things like building an interactive game with a UI or deploying an end-to-end -end website, it shows Waterloo that you actually know how to code and doing all that stuff is going to give you a head start in the co-op search. I did like two hackathons, I did some freelance work as well, and a lot of personal projects. And I was able to put all of that onto my GitHub, which I then linked onto the AIF. Now, if they actually look at it, I'm not sure, but even if they did skim over it for two seconds, they would see that I'm committing to my projects almost every single day, which is something that they value a lot. I think I'm going to get these diamonds just for fun. Another thing that's worth mentioning is that if you're able to express interest in concepts like data structures and algorithms, I think that could give you a big advantage. And if you don't know what that is, then uh, well, now it's time to start learning. A lot of the courses at Waterloo are built on those concepts. And for most co-op interviews, they're going to be testing those concepts. If you're able to demonstrate some expertise or even show a little bit of interest in those concepts, I think that could set you apart from a lot of the other candidates. Oh, I just accidentally made nine doors. If you're in high school and you start doing things like competitive programming and leak code, that's definitely something you could put on the application and something that's gonna prepare you very well in the future. Again, I'll put something up on the screen to show you what I did in high school. So wrapping up now, I would really divide up the application into three main pillars. The first one being... Hold on, wait, I have to lock in and make this nether portal. Oh my god, I did it! Oh, I don't have flint! The main thing that you should be improving is your marks. Try to join clubs that relate to STEM and spend a lot of time on one to two different activities over joining all the school clubs. Start preparing for the math contest because I think they're coming up in like February or April and try to do as much coding as you can because they're looking for students who already have decent knowledge in computer science and are able to be competitive in the co-op search. Start a GitHub, start attending hackathons and building projects, and even better, start learning concepts like data structures and algorithms, or like even system design. I don't even know how you can do that as a high school student, but if you can, that's gonna give you a huge advantage. Wait, why isn't this... Oh yeah, this one... Oh, shit. Guys, I fucked up my portal. I'm just gonna break this obsidian and fill it in. But yeah, good luck with applications. Let me know if you guys have any questions. I'll try to get back to you and subscribe for more internship and recruiting content. Oh, dude, we got such a shit another spawn.